I bet you have a few awesome friends who stand out for strength and for their hardiness. They are super strong, capable, and you admire them to death. You know, I'm Andy Asher, I'm editor over here at Bloomer Boomer, where I talk to amazing thought leaders and experts. My point here is the meaning of hardiness and how it, uh, it affects the way we live. It's getting a very close examination. Now scientists are even uh, taking a closer look at people and their ability to survive adversity like, like a plant life that survives extreme weather under extreme conditions. Now hardiness is being linked to humans who've learned to uh, well, make stress work to achieve life goals. And today, the word hardiness is the name of a new book. And its co-author joins us today. He is Stephen Stein, a PhD, in a clinical psychologist, and the founder of Multi Health Systems, MHS, a behavior analytics company. And he is the former chair of the Psychology Foundation of Canada. Now, he teaches at the uh, Director's College of Canada. Uh, now, uh, Stephen, I hope that I've included all the important credits here, but and it's a long list, but, you know, thanks for uh, coming and joining the show today. Great to be with you today, Andy. Well, you know, talk to us a little bit about the, the notion of hardiness. Now, it appears there are uh, references in the plant kingdom and now it's associated more and more to the study of psychology. You know, I, I just wanted to get, kind of get your take on that. Sure. Well, it's a sort of little known concept in the general population. But in the psychology world, there's been a group of psychologists who've been studying it for the last 30 years. And uh, it started as a fairly simple thing. It started uh, with a group in uh, University of Chicago studying some people in a workplace. What we've learned is that hardiness is due to three factors, what we call the three C's. Uh, and if you want, we can go through those three C's to give you an idea of what differentiates these people. Yeah, I, and I, I, that's uh, really uh, important. And I think that uh, that might be a good takeaway for uh, a lot of our, our viewers today. And, and your book, uh, Hardiness, Making Stress Work for You to Achieve Your Life Goals, it focuses on a on a variety of living challenges where hardiness makes the difference between uh, success and failure absolutely the three areas that really differentiate these are all things that you can develop the first one is challenge where we look at things that may be stressful or difficult in our lives we step back a bit and we look at what we can learn from it we embrace change we look at for a new opportunity the second is control really understanding what parts around you, you can, you can do things, you can control, you can manage the, your own behavior and which things are not manageable, like the weather and so on. And the third is commitment. Commitment is setting goals, whether they're life goals or short-term goals, having something to look forward to, being future-oriented. Those three things differentiate the people that we found to be hardy people you know and that makes a lot of sense and and as you're speaking and me looking back at, at some of the folks that i identify that way and i also noticed uh, that you constructed your book as a as a resource really with detailed chapter headings and, and subheadings um, that really really makes it helpful i mean now let's see chapter eight uh you made some interesting points about how hardiness works to protect health and performance you know, that is so important as we get older because, you know, we aren't uh, feeling strong emotionally. Our, our physical health can suffer, uh, you know, if we aren't feeling up to snuff or something. Absolutely. And, and health is, uh, is, a, is a very important area that we have an influence on in terms of our mindset, the way we think about things in the world. And those three factors can affect you in amazing ways. We found research where it affects you in terms of survivors of cancer, for example, and how they cope with the after effects of treatment is affected by their hardiness. And there's a number of other uh, of disorders, disorders of aging and, and other areas where we found this to be extremely important. You know, now, um, 
Bloomer Boomer is a, is a lifestyle publication for people over 55 and uh, I like to dive deeper by, by asking a couple of questions into you know what makes hardiness unique uh, let's say to our community you know what have you found possibly in terms of things like mindfulness or exercise or how we live and work or opt into retirement all of those big thorny issues. Well, it has a lot to do with how we live. Mindfulness and meditation, these are all great in terms of trying to help you reduce stress. But what we found is that it doesn't work for everyone. Some people just have a difficult time trying to calm down or reduce that stress. The idea, idea behind my, of hardiness is that the physiological aspects that you're experiencing can actually be beneficial, can be helpful. The heart rate, uh, you know, all those things that you feel under stress, but if you interpret them differently, if you think of them as excitement, as something to look forward to, it's much more beneficial for your health in many cases. You know, it's funny you should put it that way because I used to have a job and everyone used to say, oh, wasn't it so stressful and difficult in that sense? And I would always tell them, but it was always a good stress as it was an exciting stress. So you make the point, I think, that in a way that there's a, there's a good stress and maybe a bad stress. Yeah, and we really focus on how you get that good stress. So the ideas of challenge and control and, and commitment all lead towards channeling it towards a positive stress. You know, we look at we looked at performance artists, we looked at Olympic athletes, we looked at how those people channel their excitement instead of nervousness or fear and how much better it helps them in their performance. Yeah, well, I was a, a, a news reporter and you know, you always had these tight deadlines and so that's where the stress came in, but it was always exhilarating. Uh, and even uh, you even break down, I think it's in chapter 14, hardiness and your health, and then you address some specific diseases as it applies to that. Absolutely, yeah. As I mentioned, we found relationships between coping with, with diseases like cancer. There's a, uh, a study on, on rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, there's a number of these diseases that are affected physiologically. They can be hormonally, they could be through your parasympathetic nervous system. But it's your attitude, your mindset that has a huge influence in how you experience it, even these very difficult disorders. You know, Stephen, I know that uh, you've come across some doubters. I mean, there are always people who, who really doubt this, people who say it's impossible, impossible to simply, uh, you know, will yourself to success. It requires more than that, even, even dumb luck, they might say. Are you able to convert the doubters to understand what you're t teaching? Well, we're not saying that, you know, you're going to will yourself to being perfectly healthy. What we're looking at is just people who do better with a disorder than those who do worse with a disorder. So we're not trying to cure anything and, and just turn your world around that way. But uh, oh, there are not? studies. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to do that. But, you know, the nice thing about what we've done is we've backed up everything that we present in the book with science. We cite reference articles and peer reviewed journals that you can go to if you have any doubts about uh, the claims or, or the reports that we're making. Uh, it's very science based, very science oriented. My co author, uh, Paul Bartone, psychologist, he was a colonel in the US Army, uh, taught at West Point, and has spent his career researching this area of hardiness. And, uh, it's been beneficial in so many different areas. You know, and I find myself wanting to get control of my life so that I, I don't let all the distractions get in my way. You know, where, where do I begin with something like that? Well, you know, the first thing really is to set your goals, what we call commitment. What is it that you really want out of life? What do you see getting out of the, you know, the next five years, the next year? What are you looking for? You know, I do this with my, my mother who's 100 years old right now. I even have her look into the future. What does she want to do for the next month, the next five months, the next year? Uh, you're never too old to look at where you want to go in life. That's encouraging, you know, and I like your chapter, Understanding Hardiness Control, and the subheading is Taking Control When Your Body Can't. And you focus on Michael J. Fox, the, the popular actor who at 29 was diagnosed with Parkinson's uh, disease. Uh, what can you share in Michael's case that, uh, that we can learn from? 
Well, there was a matter of balance, right? And I guess at your earlier point of, of overselling the concept, is a good example we give in the book uh, taken from uh, Michael J. Fox, where he thought he was recovering uh, from his disorder enough to take an unnecessary risk. He actually got out of his bed at night and walked where he shouldn't have and fell and got injured as a result of that. So what we learn is really this area of control and to really maximize understanding what you can control from what you can't control. And uh, there's, a, there's a good life lesson in there from Michael Fox and how he came to terms with his disorder and how he's managed to live happily or as well as he can with it. Yeah, that's something I try to live by as well. Now, Stephen, as we wind down here, uh, this all uh, takes some serious discipline. I mean, you can focus on hardiness for a few days and then you don't want to fall back into bad behavior. It's, it's a lot to ask uh, of ourselves at times. <laughs> it is, but you know what? It's worth it. Uh, you know, setting goals for yourself, ensuring you know what your values are, knowing that you can do things, getting that control in, in place, and challenge, just being curious, just asking questions about life, about things in general. It's amazing how helpful this can be and, uh, and make you feel better. Good message. Now, I hope people go out and get your book, Hardiness, but what are some good tricks people can use to, to gain hardiness uh, from this moment on? Well, the first thing is really make sure you've got some goals, what you want to do. You know, especially uh, when we're tiring, a lot of people I've seen just don't know what they're going to do next. They have no plan, and that makes life difficult. If you have a hobby, go back to when you were young. For me, it was music. I used to love playing the saxophone when I was a kid, and I picked it up again later in life, and now I'm loving it, playing in bands. So find something you did when you were young. Find a hobby, something that got you excited as a kid, and find a way to bring it back into your life wow. and make that a part of your retirement. Boy, did you ever hit home with me? Yeah, I was a, a band member playing my saxophone, and I still have it here. So uh, it's a Good great idea. You. It's going to probably Pick be. It up. It's gonna, anything else that uh, maybe we did we glanced over? We want to emphasize? Uh, well, the other is the challenge. It's it's be curious. You know, don't when someone tells you something and you're skeptical. Ask yourself questions. Be curious. Be curious about the world. Try and learn more. Try and discover. Even when something bad happens to you. You know, take it in, but say, you know, what can I learn from this? How could this benefit me? There's always a benefit. There's always a silver lining on the cloud. I think that's, and you've got to find that silver lining. That's perfect. Stephen, thanks so much uh, for your time. It was really fascinating. Thanks for having me, Andy. Dr. Stephen Stein and his book, Hardiness, uh, Making Stress Work for You to Achieve Your Life Goals. You can get it right here at Bloomer Boomer. Uh, and in the meantime, we have more amazing guests coming up. Get your newsletter at bloomerboomer.com. And until next time, so long.